But we'd like to now move on to something different. And we currently would like to talk about where we are as a country in terms of the SDGs, particularly in light of COVID-19. And we recently had what was known as a hackathon. We're going to be joined on this conversation by Walid Badawi, who is a resident representative, United Nations Development Program, that's UNDP, and also David Ogiga, who's the chair of the Association of Countrywide Hub, right here to have that discussion. So as we are going to be joined by Walid Badawi via video link, but let's start with David Ogiga, who is uh, on, already with us. And uh, David, maybe just to give us um, an overview of the recent hackathon that took place and what that was all about as we, uh, you know, uh, paint the picture and, uh, you know, get into the conversation. Maybe tell us a little bit about the hackathon. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. I think maybe to start to give uh, perspective to the viewers is uh, maybe a definition of what a hackathon is. Mm. So a hackathon is a design sprint where uh, innovators come together and then look at possible solutions for issues. And so normally the test is in the time. So very intensive within a very short period of time. And you are solving a given situations. And uh, if they are programmers or if they are using technology or non-technology, but at the end of, say, if it is 36 or 48 hours, there need to be solutions. And so the hackathon that we ran was uh, towards COVID. As you are aware, the world is grappling with the challenge of coronavirus. And as Kenyan ecosystem innovators, we were looking at what is it that we, the role that we can be able to play in lessening the the effect, negative, the negative impact of, of coronavirus. So already this event uh, happened. That was the last, yesterday was the final award ceremony in which we were able to select some of the best startups. All right, and maybe just so that we have an idea, what were the specific uh, challenges that maybe you put before those who are participating? So we were looking at three thematic areas. We were looking at one is food systems, and second is health sector, and third was on decent work. And so one of the challenges we gave the innovators is to look beyond COVID. Otherwise, you'll end up just forming a business like in the quill uh, that we saw some time back. Mm. So I, are you able to form a business that not only offers solutions during COVID, but also in the next 10, 20, 30 years, and that it can be a viable solution uh, not for the current period, but also in the future to come. Yeah. Okay, and of course this was uh, to also provoke those who are participating to be visionary and not just look at things right now, but also look at the future. Uh, maybe some of the gains that you can uh, say you have uh, realized with this particular hackathon. I think one of the things, <clears throat> if you look at the three thematic areas, um, Michael, is if you look at, for example, food, Agriculture is key sector in this country, mm. contributes 27% of the GDP, I think over 70% employment, job opportunities, especially in the rural areas. And, but with the lockdown, you find that many farmers are unable to continue uh, farming, that's one. But two, the supply, supply chains have been uh, uh, sort of like stopped. It's difficult to move food from place to place. And so what solution can we be able to come up with that especially we can take food the most vulnerable? in the marginalized areas. And okay. so, so, those were, so we were looking at some of those solutions. But also if you look at, for example, in the decent work, um, uh, as we speak today, four, over 4 million Kenyan youth are out of job. Mm. Uh, with the lockdown, the factory are shutting, most businesses are declaring redundancy. And so the challenge again was to f come up with solutions that can be able to address the job, the joblessness of the Kenyan youth and especially the Kenyan population, mm. and so and and that that's just a tip of the iceberg. Also, you look, if you look at health and the various challenges that that sector as, as well faces, yeah. All right, I'm sure from the hackathon you probably managed, and this is not uh, you know it's 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 not secret. It's something that's known. Kenyans are very innovative and have a lot of enthusiasm in terms of finding solutions for some of those thematic areas, food and health. But what what has been a big challenge for many of them is the support, whether financial, whether in terms of developing those ideas. With the hackathon, are we looking at a more um, you know um, concentrated approach to whereby these ideas 
ideas can have, whether it is financial support that is required or whatever support is needed for these ideas to be actualized and made into dreams coming true? I think one of the things that uh, I will say is the platform we created was very inclusive. So we had the government directly involved through mm -hmm. Konza of Technopolis, who are our good partners, led by Engineer Tanui. Uh, we had the development partners. We had UK Tech Aid, UNDP um, supporting, as well as many others. And then we had the innovators, and we had um, the, the tech ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And so that broad spectrum, I think, ensures that the solutions that are coming out of the hackathon can be directly adopted, not, not only in the government-owned response, but also in the general public. And that this could, because I think that was, if you, and you captured very well, like, w there are always many challenges with the startup ecosystem. And right. I think I can just say top of my head, one of these is the financing, which has always been a big issue. The other one is, of course, the policy, uh, mm -hmm. that the policy needs to be uh, friendly to startups ecosystem and be able to support SMEs and young people coming out of universities. And so... When we were in the design stage of uh, the hackathon, we were cognizant that we need to be able to capture the breadth and length of this community and the society and uh, have, a, have, a, have a sort of like a platform that uh, is able to be adopted by the population. And so I think we were able to achieve that through the stakeholders that came on board, yeah. All right, and talking about stakeholders, we do know that this was done in uh, conjunction and uh, in support with uh, United Nations Development Authority, uh, Development Program, and we are now joined by Walid Badawi, who's a resident representative, UNDP, and thank you for joining us. Uh, maybe let's start off with a question on uh, UN being one of the lead agencies on human development. What has UNDP done so far in supporting the fight against COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you, uh, Michael, for, for that, and great to be on the show with David. It was great to participate on, uh, on the challenge. But your question, maybe first on human development, and let me just say that for us as UNDP, human development is what defines what we do. Uh, it is about expanding people's choices, and this has really been integrated in um, all of our support, not just to COVID-19 response, but through uh, everything that we do. So to your question specifically, UNDP globally has uh, developed what we call a three by three framework of response to COVID-19, which looks at three axes. One is helping countries to prepare, two, to respond, and three, to recover uh, from COVID-19. So the first thing we did as UNDP when the first case was announced on the 12th of March was really uh, to look at how within the UN family, given the fact that this is a public health emergency and there are agencies like the World Health Organization that um, are taking the lead in uh, uh, addressing the public health emergency is given our portfolio of programs as UNDP, a player within the UN system present in Kenya of some 23 agencies, we looked at repurposing immediately our programs to identify immediate interventions aligned with that three-pronged approach to help countries prepare, respond, and recover. So among the things that we were privileged to do uh, since that first case was uh, announced to help the country respond, and again, I, I, I need to applaud the efforts of the government of Kenya for the very proactive stance it has taken. So one, uh, as a collective UN system, we had repurposed some $45 million of existing funds made available to us from uh, uh, our development partners to provide immediate support to uh, COVID-19 across the three pillars of our uh, UN development assistance framework, which really looks at governance, uh, inclusive and sustainable growth, and uh, social uh, support. So for us, we've, uh, we help to develop a policy brief that uh, actually is impacting the discussions that are going on now to start moving beyond the health response and look at some of the socioeconomic impacts. We were happy to uh, provide support for communications as part of the National Emergency Response uh, Committee of the government on COVID-19 to raise community and public awareness on, um, uh, on issues around COVID-19. Mm. 
We have a program uh, jointly implemented with our agencies, UNICEF and UN Women, addressing the, the huge devolution opportunity uh, that the country has embarked on. And what we've done there is uh, looked at uh, repurposing some 3.1 million uh, of funds to ensure that counties are better supported through human resources capacities, uh, both at the Council of Governors level, but also in the counties through deployment of technical expertise in various fields, food, health, uh, uh, issues of gender, mm. but also deployment of UN volunteers. We've also provided medical waste uh, uh, equipment uh, to Mbagati Hospital. Right. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact, I go to Nakuru to give uh, more equipment there. So a lot that UNDP has really been it's doing. Okay. All right, look, uh, looking at support. So yes, sir. Looking at the three by three approach that you've mentioned of prepare, respond, and recover, I would like to believe that we are at the respond level. What is the order of priority that uh, we are likely to see, given that the UN has made an appeal of uh, 267.5 million dollars uh, to support the government of Kenya? What's the order of priority in response? I think uh, first and foremost is really to address the public health emergency. That is order uh, number one. Uh, but a very quick second, given the knock-on effects of this health uh, uh, crisis that uh, the world is facing, is really to begin to look at the socioeconomic aspects. And, and this actually falls within the respond and recover space. You can't draw a very neat line in between them. So things start as you're actually addressing uh, the later uh, phase. And actually, just yesterday, uh, the government has uh, launched its uh, first um, uh, household survey on the socioeconomic impacts, uh, and we're looking very closely on what those impacts are because uh, 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 we need to have a very targeted and deliberate response to the very clear needs that are just now being fully quantified. Uh, so the, the spectrum is really uh, looking uh, uh, at all three areas actually simultaneously. All right. And uh, maybe I'll come back to you on how Kenya is doing in terms of SDG goals, in your opinion. But let me come to you, David Ogiga, as the chair of the Association of Countrywide Hub. The objective, the end game for this hackathon, which we already have, uh, you, has already happened, what is the end game? What is it that you want to achieve? What is it that you see envisaged, uh, particularly post-COVID? Um, thank you very much, Mike. I think for us, we're looking at how do we quickly deploy some of the solutions that are coming out of the, of the hackathon. And so already with um, that's Countrywide Hub and Konza, of course, through the support of our partners like UNDP, mm -hmm. I'm happy that uh, Mr. Badawi is also joining us this morning, is, is that uh, we'll design an acceleration, a three-month acceleration program. So what happened during the acceleration is they are supported in terms of technical. So if they need materials, and this has also has been possible through some of the partners that we're working with. So if they need technical, they need legal, hand-holding processes uh, because it's actually very challenging especially for new business entering the market. So what we want to ensure is that not only are they introduced in the market but they stay in the market and continue to offer the services. Okay. So mm -hmm. all these will be and uh, this is also I must also add on this uh, it will be all be virtually done all the support and uh, ecosystem and the systems and all this and it's the first time uh, maybe for us to run a virtual hackathon. So no one, we didn't, we did, because of social distancing, we could not, typically you should have done this in an open space for eight hours of a design sprint and come up with ideas, but all this was done in a virtual space. So we set up the competition, we, we got like 56 judges, we got like 20, 2 over 20 mentors, both teams from Cons and country hubs were only talking on phone. And so the end game is to see that these solutions are actually introduced in the market. So at that level, once they're in, in the market, and the other aspect is, can they be investment ready? And so the process of supporting them the, technically will ensure that uh, whoever wants to fund either through equity or grant or whatever support system, because they need to scale and they need not only to offer services uh, here but also can go globally globally yeah. now i know the nature of a competition is that they're winners and losers and that that's understandable but i'm sure it doesn't mean that some of the ideas that came on board that did not win are bad ideas are those ideas that are going to be harnessed maybe followed up or do they have to look for other avenues 
Now we 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 were absolutely categorically clear. We we had over 300 applicants. So one of the things that we told the over 300 that did not make it. Um, I was saying this perhaps yesterday is that um, uh, that it's it's a temporary setback. Use the lesson that uh, you learned really and reorient reorient your idea and introduce it. It doesn't mean, because this is just one competition, there are several others that I know that are ongoing. Mm. And so the challenge, of course, is for the over 300 that do not make it to the top 10, is to redesign, uh, rethink whatever the judges, the feedback, use it to uh, introduce their product. So that was the sort of like the information we gave. All right, uh, coming to you, Mr. Badawi, you're as a key partner in this particular hackathon, how would you rate it? Well, I would say that it was uh, definitely uh, a resounding preliminary success uh, simply because, uh, you know, any opportunity that uh, we have to mine the creative talents that exist in any society to come up with uh, new ways of uh, solving our traditional problems is, uh, is a welcome one. I think, uh, as David was saying, the, the key here now is how do we ensure that uh, we can uh, provide the kind of support that these young innovators, uh, brilliant young innovators uh, need, whether it's uh, access to finance to help them uh, incubate their ideas, whether it's mentoring technical support to uh, ensure that uh, the, the, they can continue this business, whether it's uh, protecting their intellectual property rights. A whole host of challenges have been identified in the innovation ecosystem uh, here in Kenya that uh, really uh, require us uh, as a development community put hands together uh, and make sure that we can provide that support as uh, you know just to recall what Einstein said we cannot solve a problem uh, by using the same kind of thinking we use when we created them so this is you know uh, the hackathon and the challenge uh, is an opportunity to to allow us uh, to do uh, the exact opposite of that so um, I think it's a it's a definitely a preliminary success uh, we could have uh, reached out to more people uh, Looking at the statistics, I think um, only 13.5% of uh, uh, the uh, uh, submissions were from uh, women um, uh, from 17 of the 47 counties. So certainly there are areas that uh, could have been improved uh, had we had more time, but uh, we know COVID-19 is an emergency. So we have to run a marathon with the mindset of a sprinter. So uh, some things do have to give, unfortunately. But I want to pick up on the point that you said. I don't think any of the 360 applicants is a loser here. I think every single one of them is a winner. And for our uh, side, we are already looking not just at the top three or the top 10. We're looking at the full list of innovations to see how through opportunities that uh, UNDP and through our accelerator lab, but also the wider UN system. As I said, there are 23 UN agencies operating here in Kenya, all of whom are actually looking at how innovation can be relevant. Okay. The three streams are relevant to the work of the entire UN system. So we'll feed that in. All right. And as we wind up going forward, what should we expect from UNDP in regards to innovation in Kenya? We'll certainly uh, look at uh, taking some of these ideas forward in partnership with CONSA and the uh, Association of Countrywide Innovation Hubs. We have uh, resources as a development partner uh, uh, to invest in, in, uh, in uh, unearthing these innovations. We're going to be working with the Ministry of ICT mm -hmm. to uh, take our accelerator lab uh, to, to, to scale. So you can expect a very engaged UNDP in this innovation ecosystem to make sure that, can, that Kenya continues to be number one uh, in, the, in, the, in the continent, uh, in the innovation ecosystem. All right. Thank you very much, Walid Badai, for joining us. And uh, maybe your closing remarks, David Ogiga? I think my is to thank really all the partners, especially the government, uh, for the support. To thank Konza, Technopolis, to thank all the development partners, UNDP, UK, Kenya Tech Hub, really. And that... For the innovators, this is just the beginning. The world is looking upon you. I think Kenya has, um, in terms of effect, we've lost 50 lives, which is regrettable. 
Uh, but if you look globally, I think over 300,000 people have lost their lives. No one knows when the end is, but I think as the ecosystem communities, that's the innovators, we have a role to play. And so we look forward to uh, bringing these solutions next to there. Thank you very much, yeah. David Ogiga, who's the chair of Association of Countrywide Hub. And also we were joined by Walid Badawi, who's a resident representative in the UNDP. And that's where we're going to wind up this uh,